Hey guys, welcome to a new video. I wanted to go ahead and make a quick video answering a comment that I got in my yesterday's video. So if you guys are familiar, I posted a Zazzle video yesterday. Let me go ahead and try to pull it up hey guys, right here. Here it is. So the Zazzle strategy. By the way, I do want to apologize for yesterday's video. Um, my mic was not connected. So hopefully you guys can actually hear me a lot better. Now the, the volume did come out perfectly fine but the volume it sounds really low for yesterday's video so if you can just try to crank that volume up and you should be able to hear me all right so let's go ahead and answer one of the comments I got from redneck Cinderella shout out to redneck Cinderella she says uh, finally I got Zazzle rocket tagger and I think it will be very helpful but I'm getting stuck on how many results are too many and how many are too few do you have a ballpark range on the number of, of results you look for? So I'm not sure if, uh, shout out to Redneck Cinderella. Um, I do want to address the other comments. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you for the comments. Like uh, San, uh, Sanjay Sanja. I'm sorry if, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Uh, but shows a lot of love in the comment. Shout out to you. I love you so much. Thank you for all the support. I greatly appreciate it. Um, but shout out to Redneck Cinderella for asking the question. And I want to kind of be clear. I'm not sure if you saw some of my past videos on the Zazzle uh, process behind how I tag. Um, and, and I could really make, to be honest, 10, 20, 30 hours of content around tagging. But the reality is, is one of the easiest ways is to tag with the Zazzle Rocket Tagger tool. So for those who have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll just kind of pull it up real quick so we're all on the same page. There's a website called botsandapps.com. Um, uh, there's a product called the Zazzle AI Rocket Tagger. It's this tool. It costs $9.99 a month. You can get a discount if you pay yearly. If you pay six months, you get a discount, whatever. Right? So even, I think, if you pay quarterly, you could get a discount as well. So um, anyways, uh, so the way the tool kind of is functioning here is that it will spit out a ton of results right but the results are not the number of results that don't matter what matters is the selection so I'll kind of put it into perspective here so let me go ahead and take the tool and run the tool right now and right now I did a a, a keyword search for the word summer wedding okay and we could see here I mean it says failed copy tags I want to see if you guys can see this yep you guys can see this perfectly fine it says failed copying tags to clipboard and part of the reason why is because there's just so many right which is fine uh, but the way this would work is I would copy this let's just type here a um, online notepad right something like that and just paste the results here so all of these all of these I guess you could say words here separated by commas or tags and you have to keep what you have to keep in mind is these tags right are the most optimal for what's being presented and what's being searched so c remember customers right are technically technically and indirectly choosing the order of what appears now some of you might say that's not true customers don't choose what appears on the search it's the algorithm and yes the algorithm chooses what appears based on customers, right? So invariably, right, or indirectly, the customers are choosing what appears. And the way the tool works is that you're going to get results a lot of the times. Not a lot of the time. Yeah, a lot of the times. I don't I don't know why, why I wouldn't say that. But a lot of the times, let me try to pull up the online notepad here. A lot of the times that there's a lot of keywords. And what you're your whole goal is your goal is not to just copy blindly right because this keyword is not necessarily more valuable where it says navy blue marriage is not more valuable than necessarily vintage classic casual elegance it's not necessarily more valuable than the other uh, from a keyword perspective but it is from a usage perspective and that's why it's important and what I mean by that when I say a usage perspective you want to think about how you're creating your actual art if you remember, it, you can't really just talk about tagging when it comes to Zazzle without talking about the art creation. And when I say the art creation, I'm talking about like crafting the actual product, 
right? So here you see like there's these blue ocean waves and it says save the date. Heather plus Thomas are getting married. And obviously the, the text here is customizable or else it just wouldn't even be worth it to sell, right? So like the Heather and Thomas, the date, the, the location, all these things should be customizable. In fact, if we go over here and hit personalize, you could actually see the elements that are customizable. You have the location, you have the marriage kind of concept, uh, the names and the date, right? So those are the customizable elements. With that being said, right, the, the design comes together with the tags. So for example, if this was my art, right, if this was something that I had created, I wouldn't, let's go to the um, the list of tags here, and I'll just pick like something random. I would not pick fall greenery garden as the keyword. That's not, that's not a word that I would pick. Does that make sense? And the reason why is because it does not relate to the art. Now, this is what I'm trying to say and what I've said in my past videos, and it's been a strategy that's worked for me so many times, right? Instead of focusing on creating the art first you do the research first and then create the art based on the research does that make sense so let me give you an example right if i go over here and i search for the keyword on zazzle summer wedding right summer wedding could mean a lot of things it doesn't necessarily have to be water or ocean or anything like that it could be something with greenery. It could be something with foliage. It could be something botanical, floral, uh, or it could be something just based on just topography. It doesn't even have to be related to any one of those things, right? But how do I know what to pick or what to do? And that's why the options are open after I understand what people are invariably or indirectly looking for. So without variable, and this is why I say invariably, it's without variable. These things are not necessarily changing, but they are based on what the person wants. So, and, and when I say the person, we're talking about the clients, the customers of Zazzle. So for example, if this was something that I was going to create, right? Summer wedding products, right? Other than the actual product, right? I have to first focus on what elements am I going to add to the design? But in order for me to do that and actually make the connection to the customer and be seen by the customer is the same elements that I have in my designs. They need to be replicated through the tags or they need to be manifested through the tags. But remember, we do the research first before we create the art for Zazzle. And once again, this is just the strategy that I have found that has created me really amazing success. So and, and I personally haven't seen anybody describe it this way. And these are kind of my own strategies. So I'm not taking a page out of someone else's book or I'm not kind of teaching something that somebody else has taught. This is purely just based on my own work. So for example, if I'm creating in this niche, let's just type in the word summer wedding. And by the way, every keyword you search is its own niche. Um, I would look around and I would start creating what I call a bucket system. And I've talked about this before. I've made videos on this before. In fact, if you just go to my channel here and you type in the word Zazzle, right? Um, spelled that wrong. Uh, Zazzle, right? You can see a lot of different videos that I've created, right? Um, and I've, I've kind of shown this bucket strategy in a few videos, but I'll kind of describe the basics to it now. I won't go too deep into it, just the basics. Um, if you look at my yesterday's video, I linked like four or five videos in the comments, I believe. Let me check. Yep, in the comments. So I said Zazzle videos mentioned, and then I put these videos here. You can go ahead and watch them. Click on them, watch them. They'll help you out. But the way it will work is I'll create these buckets. And what these buckets are is they're categorizations for different keywords. So the word summer wedding, this is effectively a bucket for the keyword summer wedding right so I'll take this I'll just type in summer wedding because that's the actual keyword and now I have a list of words that relate on a algorithmic and consumer based level to the word summer wedding and just to make things guys really really simple in layman's terms what I'm really saying is if I'm gonna create content or products content products whatever you want to call it for the word summer wedding I know that all these characteristics 
are desired by customers for that keyword. Does that make sense? So logically, what I would want to do is instead of coming up with my own mind, random ideas of what to create for concepts and, and take a risk on it, let me go the more secure and guaranteed route to increase my chances of success. Why would I imagine what might potentially be successful when the answer is already given to me? So I could look at this and I could say, okay, here's the keyword soft pastel, tender, dreamy. Now, I don't know what Tender Dreamy is, but Soft Pastel, I understand that. Certain types of colors. Here we have the word Blush Blossom. Here we have the word Boho Natural Green Leaf. Here we have the word Pink Floral. Here we have Calligraphy Script. Different keywords like this, I can not only add them in my tags, but more importantly, other than just the tags, take those characteristics and add them to the actual art. If I can do that, right, and I kind of want to do a whiteboard here. I want to I want to pull up a whiteboard. Um, let's pull up a whiteboard here. Uh, whiteboard, free online whiteboard. Um, what what is this? Uh, free online whiteboard. Come on, whiteboard online. But there we go. All right. So if I can back to my kind of example here. Um, if I can, sorry guys, it's taking a little while. Uh, let's make this bigger. Okay. If I can find what customers want, and I'm writing the word want here, and then present the customer with what they want. So I'm going to write present here. So show them what they want through the algorithm by creating the products that they want. So if I discover what they want, and I can present what they want, then both of these forces will eventually collide, and I'll get a sale. Right? Because that's exactly what's happening at the end of the day. Over here, right, when a customer searches for something, they find something they like and they purchase it, well, that's the full cycle, right? The, the only reason why they're purchasing is because they're either finding something they want or finding something that satisfied their minimum needs, right? And I've spoken about this in yesterday's video. One of the best products that you can sell are products not in terms of the physical Con uh, conception or the physical segmentation of what a product is, but the usage of it, a product that can be sold in bulk versus a one-off product, right? And once again, I haven't seen people teach it this way, but this is just purely my opinion. Um, so, and by the way, my opinion is based off sales, but the point is, is that the only time a sale happens, right, is when the customer actually searches for what they want and based on what they find presented on the website, right, they either have something that they want, right, or it satisfies their minimum needs, and then they go through and purchase. Now, your goal is not to care about what the customer wants too much. Your goal is just to get the job done, create the products, and move on to the next and keep making money. At the end of the day, that's what we're here for. We're here to make profit, right? Um, so what you have to do, and this is just what I'm saying is, is stop taking your own mind or, or stop taking your own ideas and putting it into it. You, you don't have to think about what would you do or how is it good or whatever. You let the machine do all the hard work for you. For me, if I was going to create art in this niche and I didn't have the tool, I'd sit there for days trying to figure out what on earth am I going to create, right? And, and I don't need to do that because the machine already does the hard work. Now, to answer your question, she says here, um, it will be help. I'm getting stuck on how many results are too many. You're not concerned with the amount of results. What you're concerned with is making this match happen to the best of your ability, where a customer is searching for something and you're going to give it to them. And how do we know what they're searching for? Once again, the machine provides us these details. There's no guessing in this system. This is one of the reasons, like I said, why my Zazzle strategy has been so successful is because I don't sit there and guess about what customers want. I don't sit there and assume. And th this is why the number of results do not matter. Whether or they are a little bit or whether or they're a lot in any niche, I'm going to exploit that niche as best as I possibly could. Does that make sense? And the beautiful thing about Zazzle is you're allowed to have these like shops within one account. So you can have multiple shops. So let's say for one shop, you want to have it all related to weddings. 
different products related for weddings. Boom. Let's say one you want to have all birthday parties for kids. Boom. That's another niche. So there's different things that you can do. So don't be concerned with the amount of results, whether it's little or a lot. It doesn't matter. The, the, the amount is irrelevant. What you what really should matter is taking the keywords, seeing what keywords you can extract and then creating the designs based off of that. And that's the order that you should work in, not the amount of results. Because remember, we're not just copying and pasting keywords. That's not our, our concept. Meaning, let's say if this was my design, and once again, I've already used this example, but if this was my design, I wouldn't sit there and just pick random keywords out of here and just copy and paste. That, what does that do for me? That does absolutely nothing. Because think about it this way, right? If I use the keyword boho, bohemian, floral, right? And I use that in my tags, although customers are searching for it, when they find my design, let's just assume this is my design, they're not going to buy it because it doesn't relate to what they need. So remember, guys, there's a 50-50 component to this business is that 50% is mastering the machine, the algorithm, the keywords, everything that's kind of digital. But then there's a human side. The customer has to look at what they see and genuinely enjoy it and want to buy it. And they have to desire the way it looks. There's always a visual aspect, right? So it's not just the machine side. So you have to kind of mix both. So right now, I think you're thinking here, and maybe I'm wrong, but maybe you're thinking too much in a in a kind of like a process that's like, oh, what do I have to do? Step A, B, C, D. It's not like that. You don't want to concern yourself with a number. It's not about the number. It's about the characteristics, right? And so hopefully I can kind of answer your question based on my understanding of what your question is. So hopefully this video was beneficial. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Bye.